Hi there, and welcome once again to another of our weekly devotionals. As always, it is such a joy and such a blessing to be gathered together as the people of God and to share with, with each one of you in the word of the Lord. And before we get into our devotional this week, let us just open with a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we give you thanks, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the many gifts and blessings that you pour out upon our lives. Though we so often take these gifts for granted. Father, we pray for your blessing upon this time. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you would open our eyes and our hearts to your word and allow us, Lord, just to feel your loving presence more deeply this day. We ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to share with you a, a little bit of a personal thought again this week. And before we get into that, I want to read um, specifically from the book of James and from chapter 4 and verse 13 onwards. This is what James says. He says, Now listen, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go out to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast and brag. All such boasting is evil. Now, looking specifically at this passage from James, I feel it is important that first and foremost, we clarify exactly what he is referring to. So that we do not lose sight of the original context. You see, James is more than likely speaking to and addressing a specific group of people. They are quite possibly Christian people as well. But it is these people who belong to a wealthy class of merchants. Now... Surely, for anyone who, who knows anything about the concept of, of sales will know that this idea, even though we see it in the ancient world, this idea that James is referring to about going to the marketplace on such and such a day to do whatever business is necessary, it is probably good business practice to make future plans to hopefully grow one's business, to hopefully increase the demand for whatever product it is you might be selling, and in so doing, increasing your profit. This, to me, makes good business sense. Now, I'm of course, I'm not a business-orientated person, but it makes sense. And I suspect this probably makes sense to you as well. And yet, what we see James dealing with and what he warns against is this very practice. And this is not because James is saying that it is unchristian-like to engage in business. Rather, what James is warning against is an unchristian world view where God is taken out of the equation. A world view where people think that they are in control of their own time. And this got me thinking. Um, specifically about 
one particular movie and it is in fact one of my absolute favorite all-time movies and it's called about time and hopefully without spoiling too much of the movie for you it is about a man who is told by his father a family secret in which the men of this particular family have the ability to travel back in time and the question is what will you do with this ability for one member of that particular family it was entirely about making as much money as he possibly could for the father it was about reading as much as he could in fact um, throughout the movie we see that he has read um, the entire collection of Dickens um, about three times if I remember correctly for the son though who has just learned about this particular ability for him it was about finding love and as this movie progresses there are a number of lessons that the son learns and one of the most important lessons comes from the experience of the father and what he learns is that the father lived each day twice firstly he would live each day exactly as the day progressed that is um, living each day with a sense of all the the hurt all the pain all the drama whatever life had to throw at him he would live the day exactly as it was and then he would relive it and in reliving it the focus would be specifically on the joy that one would experience in that particular day but of course this is just a movie right you see i believe that there is a vital lesson to life that we often myself included tend to miss what we are offered in life what is offered to each one of us is simply this moment right here right now the past is gone there is nothing we can do to change it for us it is simply a memory the future has not yet come. The future has not happened. Yes, it is a hope that we have. It is a wish or it is a prayer. And even then, there is no guarantee about anything. What we have is this moment here and now. Now, you and I, as much as we'd like to have this particular ability from this movie, you and I cannot travel back in time. We cannot go back and correct the mistakes that we have made. We most certainly cannot relive each day twice. But I absolutely love the final thought, or rather, the final lesson that comes from this particular movie you see it is not about reliving each and every day as if we had the ability to to live the day out as it was intended and then to relive the day only to experience the joy of that day but quite simply put it is about living each day we often have difficult days maybe difficult weeks difficult months or even 
years and if you think about it how often do you find yourself thinking or saying i really wish this day was over or i cannot wait for next week or i cannot wait for things to turn around we constantly and consistently do this we wish our time away time that is so precious and so fragile already time that in the blink of an eye could come to an end we are not guaranteed of anything yet we constantly wish it away we do not like this particular moment so we wish for the next one but we are not entirely pleased with the next one so what do we do we wish for the next one after that and then we wish for the next one and then we wish for the next one until one day we wake up from this lifestyle only to realize that in fact we have so few moments maybe we have one single moment left and i myself am personally extremely guilty of this and i find that my wishes or my hopes or my prayers today are exactly the same as they were 10 years ago the problem is that i became so fixated on the next moment hoping that it would be the one that i wished for the one that i hoped for the one that i prayed for that i forgot to live in the moment past i woke up one day and realized that overnight 10 years had passed and i could hardly remember anything that happened within those 10 years sure i have um, certain snippets i have certain memories that has stuck with me but i forgot to live in the moment i forgot to experience life now i might be speaking to myself right now maybe i am the only one who has experienced this particular part of life but i believe that at the end of the day this understanding must be made clear there is no guarantee of tomorrow there is no guarantee of the next moment there is no guarantee that the next moment will be better than this one this moment is truly a gift from the lord it is not necessarily an easy moment it is not necessarily a nice moment a moment in fact i believe that is faced by the entire world right now is one that i think terrifies most of us because we do not know what is coming next and yes, I am sure that most people right now are wishing and hoping and praying that this moment would be over. But I want to encourage you to not forget to live in this moment. I want to encourage you to experience all that the lord is doing to experience his grace and his love and his mercy to understand that the lord is in control acts chapter 17 and verse 24 to verse 28 this is paul speaking to a group of athenians and he says to them the god who made the world and everything in it 
is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything because he himself gives all men life and breath and everything else. From one man he made every nation that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he determined the times set for them and the exact places where they should live. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. This is and must be what it is all about for us. It is something I believe that James was referring to when speaking to this particular group of wealthy merchants. The fact that this moment must be grounded in the Lord. Grounded in in his sovereignty, for in him we live and move and have our being in this moment. Don't wish this moment away because it is so precious and so short-lived. We will never get this moment back, nor will we be guaranteed of another one to come. We waste so much time wishing and hoping and praying for something that may never come. Something that may not, may not necessarily be better than what we have right now. We waste our time so often without even thinking about it. Not knowing that this might be the last moment we have. Don't forget to love in this moment. This moment, yes, might be extremely hard. Yes, this moment might not be what you expected it to be. Yes, there's times where, where you might be looking at this particular moment and saying, Lord, I cannot see you. Lord, I don't know where you're working. Lord, I cannot understand why I have to go through these difficult times but understand that the Lord is in control understand that the Lord is right there with you in the midst of the struggle in the midst of the hurt in the midst of the pain don't waste this moment with him just live in this moment experience everything that he is leading you towards let us pray our father in heaven we thank you lord for the gift of your word to us we thank you lord for the assurance that your word offers us the knowledge and the understanding that you indeed are a sovereign God, that you are in control. We thank you, Lord, that it is you who gives us life. As your word says, not just life, but life in abundance through your son, Jesus. So often, Lord, we look at this and we think to ourselves, what is it all for? How much more do we have to endure? How much more pain or hurt or suffering do we have to go through? So often, Lord, we wish our lives away this precious time that you have given to us in the hopes of something better. 
in the hopes of something that may never come. Lord, we pray for your strength. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you would teach us to experience this life. That you would teach us to be hopeful in what we have. To live each moment as you have given it to us. To live it out as you have intended us to do. We pray, Lord, that we would never waste this precious time. But that we would seek to experience you more fully, no matter what may come, no matter what lies ahead. Allow us, Lord, to just focus on you and you alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you.